in this module we are going to discuss about different measurements that pertain to head and face of an individual now head and face measurements are important from the standpoint that we can know about the length of the head the breadth of the head besides these two vital measurements which will tell us about the shape of the head we take measurement of the forehead we take measurements of the facial breadth we take measurements of the circumference of the head we take measurements on the lower jaw of the face we take measurements on the nose length of the nose and breadth of the nose so that we calculate an index which is called as nasal index and these nasal index can be utilized for racial discrimination different people show different type of noses similarly the head measurements length and breadth can be utilized for calculating cephalic index or the head index now this index is also variable in three major categories the first category is called as dolichocephalic which means a long head the second category is mesocephalic which is the medium shaped head and then we have the brachycephalic head which is the broad head so similarly the noses are also categorized into different categories and we can find out that what particular type of nose is present among the negroes which what type of nose is there among the caucasians or the white people and what type of nose is among the mongoloid people now besides this we have two measurements on the facial height one pertains to the total facial height which will give us an idea that how long the face of an individual is now this gives us an idea about the overall shape of the face and the other one is the middle part of the face height of the middle face now this gives us an idea besides the lower jaw what is the height of the face of an individual so this measurement help us in understanding the shape of the face and we can overall study these measurements of the head and face to know how these measurements are showing increase as the individual ages from a, uh, you know, one year of age to adulthood what type of changes take place in an individual secondly it can be utilized for formulating certain head gears for example the helmets can be formulated with the help of the head length and head breadth and the head circumference measurements the nose mask can be formulated by knowing the height of the nose and the breadth of the nose similarly any other facial outfit or these earphones that how much is the distance from the ear to the mouth so that these earphones and things like that could be formulated we require measurements on the uh, breadth of the face and breadth of the lower jaw and so on so by that virtue these measurements are quite important to understand variation within man which is one of the major feature of understanding anthropology as a subject because we study variation in man in anthropology the first measurement in the list is maximum head length now maximum head length is obtained as a distance between glabella and opisthocranian landmarks now glabella is the most projecting point at the base of the forehead between the eyebrows in mid sagittal plane when the head is oriented in i ear plane opisthocranian the other landmark is located on the posterior side of the head which is farthest from glabella and is located in the mid sagittal plane the instrument used for measuring this measurement is spreading caliper spreading caliper is a caliper which is like this it has a scale right in the middle it has two tips which will contact the point and for exploring because we have to locate the most backward point so this particular movable arm is used for that purpose now i'll demonstrate keeping the fixed arm of the cal caliper at the glabella point and the movable arm on the opisthocranian point and show how this measurement is taken this point right in the middle of the forehead at the base between the eyebrows is the glabella point now from this point we place the fixed end of the caliper here while the other end of the caliper is moved on the posterior side 
where we get the maximum observation now we look at the scale and before that we ascertain that the scale is parallel to the mid sagittal plane it's not tilted on either side and the value is coming to as 18.1 cm as the maximum head length in case of this subject the second measurement is maximum head breadth maximum head breadth is obtained as a distance between two urion points the point urion is defined as the most lateral point on the parietal region of the head now parietal region is this area and to locate the most lateral point what we have to do is this measurement is taken at right angles to the median sagittal plane so we stand behind the subject open the tips of the caliper put them in this region and move the caliper downward upward and look at the scale and wherever we find the values maximum at that point we move backward and forward by doing this movement wherever we get the maximum we record that distance but before recording we ascertain that the scale of the caliper is at right angles to the median sagittal plane by this movement we are getting the maximum value as 14.9 cm that is the maximum breadth of the head in case of this subject the next measurement is least frontal breadth this particular measurement measures the minimum breadth of the forehead region now this is the forehead portion and we have a temporal line here now in the temporal line there is a deep curve and the point which is considered for measuring least frontal breadth is fronto temporale fronto temporale is the point which is located at the deepest point on the at the incurve of the temporal line now first what we have to do is hold the caliper in such a manner that our finger index finger comes at the base of the tips of the caliper in this manner and then with our index finger we locate the in curve of the temporal line or the deepest curve of the temporal line and then place the tip of the caliper there and move it slightly up and down this time we have to record the minimum distance because the measurement is least measurement of the least breadth of the forehead and it works out to be 10.7 cm the next measurement is breadth of zygomatic arch zygomatic arch measures the breadth of the face now this portion is called the face and the zygomatic arch is here it starts from the cheekbone and goes backward right up to, to the ear of the individual so there is a raised arch like position and we have to take the maximum distance between the zygion point on either side of the zygomatic arch the zygion point is defined as the most lateral point on the zygomatic arch now for taking the measurement we again hold the calipers spanning caliper in a same manner as we did it for least frontal breadth that is placing our index where well, the tips of the caliper on our index fingers and the index fingers are slightly extended forward and place the index finger at the base of the zygomatic arch and place the tip of the caliper on the zygomatic arch now we move forward and backward to record the maximum distance in first operation we watch the scale and in the second operation when going back we again watch the scale to record the maximum value which comes out to be 13.8 in case of this subject the next measurement is upper facial height upper facial height is measured between nasian and prosthean points the point nasian is located at the base of the nose in mid sagittal plane 
Now this particular point corresponds to the meeting point of the internasal suture with the frontonasal suture. Now this is the depression of the nose and the deepest point here would be identified as the nasian point. The prosthean point is obtained at the as, as a point between the gum margins of the central upper incisors. Now central upper incisors I'll just tilt the face of the individual so that you could see kindly raise your lips upward. Now the, in between the upper lip the gum margin is the prosthean point the lowermost point on the gum margin. So for that we ask the subject to raise his lips further so that we could bring the tip of the caliper in contact with that particular point which is known as prosthean. So I will demonstrate it is this manner that after taking the point here at the nasian one tip is kept at the nasian the other one is brought and the value of this point is 6.9 centimeters for the subject. Next measurement is horizontal circumference of the head. Now horizontal circumference of the head is obtained as a circumference of the head when the tape is kept in a horizontal manner. It starts from the glabella point which was used for measuring the maximum head length and then it moves back on the opestocranian which was the other point for measuring the maximum head length and then it comes back up to the glabella point. So it is basically obtained from glabella to glabella over opistocranian point. Now for taking this particular measurement what we do is we place the tape around the head of the individual subject in such a manner that in the front it passes over the glabella point in this manner and at the back it passes over the opistocranian point which is the most posterior point at the back and then we tape and before noting down the final observation we see that the tape is horizontal to the ground and the value for this particular measurement works out to be 55.3 centimeters as is shown in this window right here. Next measurement is nasal height. Now this particular measurement provides us the idea of the height of the nose. The height of the nose is taken between nasian and subnasian points. Nasian point is the same as taken for the upper facial height which is defined as the low the deepest point at the root of the nose in mid sagittal plane the other point for taking this particular measurement is the subnasian subnasian is a point where the nasal septum meets the upper lip so this is the place where this nasal septum is meeting the upper lip region so that happens to be the subnasian point now this is to be taken in a manner that we place the fixed arm of the caliper at the nasian point and the movable arm is brought in contact with the subnasian and the measurement is recorded. Now we place it here in the, at the nasian point and then bring the other arm in contact with the nasian subnasian point and record the distance. It works out to be 5.5 one centimeters. Next measurement is nasal breadth. Nasal breadth is a very crucial measurement because it is taken between the little most points on the nasal wing of a person. Now this portion is the nasal wing of an individual on either side and the point which is the most lateral is known as LRA. LRA is defined as the latermost point on the nasal wing when the person is breathing normal. Now as this region is all cartilage, we have to take the measurement very carefully without compressing this. Otherwise if we compress, the breadth of the nose would reduce. So it has to be taken in a natural manner 
precaution is to be taken while conducting this measurement is that the person should neither smile nor talk because the moment an individual opens his mouth the breadth of the nose increases the moment he starts talking the breadth of the nose increasing so it is to be taken in natural position when the person is not talking nor smiling so for this particular measurement we have to be very careful because it's a contact measurement and in a contact measurement we have to be very careful without pressing it is to be taken so we extend one finger slightly ahead place it here so that we are able to touch the two lra points without pressing the wings of the nose and recording the distance the measurement is recorded in case of this individual is 3.8 cm the next measurement is bigonial breadth bigonial breadth is the breadth of the lower jaw now this is obtained between two gonian points the point gonian is defined as that point at the angle of the lower jaw it is the most downward and posterior point at the angle of the lower jaw now this portion is the this is the ramus of the jaw descending ramus and this is the ascending ramus right here now where the both the ramus meet the angle of the jaw is formulated here now angle of the jaw is slightly inward tilted so we have to locate the point with our finger and then on either side we hold use make use of spreading caliper and place our index fingers at the gonian point on either side and then bring the tips at the gonian point and record the distance it works out to be 10.7 cm in case of this measurement now these 10 measurements on head and face region which have been demonstrated here now these measurements are quite important from the point of view that they tell us about the dimensions of the head dimensions of the face so that way we make use of these head and face measurements in identification because they can help us in studying growth of an individual they can help us in studying variation within different population groups they can help us in identifying variation in male and female sexes so population variation and the sex variations can be studied apart from studying growth of an individual that how the head and face growth continues in case of an individual thank you